Just like BMW and Mercedes-Benz, Opel once too was a part of the luxury vehicle alliance. In this history video extension of the Opel history series, I will be talking about this interesting part of the Opel's history. Because of the total length of this subject, the subject will be divided into two parts. Part 1 will be covering the start and the start of the downfall of Opel's part in the luxury segment. And part 2 will be about the last few stages and the downfall of Opel within the luxury segment. Before we start off, don't forget to like, subscribe and also watch my other videos covering many different interesting parts of the automotive history. The start of Opel's luxury lines of Opel began in the late 1930s with the Opel Admiral. This was a luxury vehicle powered by a 3.6 liter inline 6 that produced 75 horsepower, a top speed of 132 km an hour and had an average fuel consumption of 18 liters per 100 km. This model was either a 4-door limousine or a 4-door cabriolet with a length of almost 5.30 meters and a wheelbase of around 3.3 meters. The 4-door limousine cost 6,500 German marks or 7,000 German marks or around 74 to 78,000 euros for the 4 -door. After producing only 6,400 units in just two years, the luxury model abruptly was taken out of production due to Germany's participation in World War II as Opel had to focus on the production of war vehicles such as the Opel Blitz. Up until 1964, Opel did not produce a single model in the luxury segment. Until in 1964, after over 25 years, this was changed with the introduction of Opel's new luxurious Kia D-Line or Cut Line. Models in this line were the Capitan, Admiral and Diplomat. The introduction of these vehicles were in February 1964. The volume production of the Admiral started in May 64 and the V8 models rolled off the production line in August 1964. The Admiral was powered by either an inline 6 or a V8 engine. The inline 6 had either a 2.6 liter producing 100 horsepower and had a top speed of 158 km an hour which had a 0 to 100 of 14.4 seconds or a 2.8 liter with 125 horsepower and a top speed between 166 and 170 km an hour which had a 0 to 100 time between 13.9 and 15.4 seconds. In 1967 the Admiral received a new 2 carburetor engine that became available up to 1968. This engine produced 140 horsepower and had a top speed between 175 and 180 km an hour and had a 0 to 100 time of 11.9 up to 12.9 seconds. In 1965, the Admiral had 4.6 liter V8 taken from Chevrolet, which had 188 horsepower, a top speed of 200 km an hour and a 0 to 100 time of 10.8 seconds. And this model was only powered by a two-speed automatic transmission, also taken from Chevrolet. Up until November 1968, around 55,000 Admirals were made, making it the most successful model of the A generation of the Kia D-Line. The Opel Capitan could be considered as the cheapest of the three luxury cars, and was also the model that was the least exclusive. Even though this model had still had the option for the large 4.6 liter engine and had multiple luxury extras. Up until November 1968, around 22,500 Capitans were made, not even half the amount of the Admirals. The Opel Diplomat was the top of the line luxury vehicle of Opel. It was powered by the same 4.6 liter V8 as the Admiral, with a top speed of 200 km an hour and a 0 to 100 time of only 10.8 seconds. The Diplomat's main difference with the other models was the fact that it exclusively had V8 engines the other models didn't offer, such as an even bigger 5.4 liter V8 that was offered since October 1966. The Diplomat was also offered as a coupe since February 1965, which was only powered by the 5.4 liter V8. The car had similar specifications for the engine it shared with the Admiral and the Capitan. The only unique engine it had was the 5.4 liter V8, which was introduced in September 1966 and produced 227 horsepower, a top speed of 210 km an hour and a 0 to 100 time of only 9.5 seconds for 
Eventually, the coupe ran out of production in July 1967, after only 347 units were made. The limousine followed up and went out of production in November 1967, more than a year later. The pricing of the Diplomat was the highest of the three models from the cut line. The cabriolet or coupe was more expensive than the limousine. In March 1969, all of the cat line models received a new generation, after a production period of around 5 years for each model. The cars became more boxy, received better technology, as the 2-speed automatic transmission in the previous generation became the 3-speed automatic transmission, also became more powerful as fuel injection was introduced for the models, were more luxurious as they had more options to choose from than before and also were more expensive than before. The Capitan B's body was shortened a bit, as it was 5 cm shorter than the Capitan A, which was 4 meters and 95 cm in length for the A and 4 meters and 90 cm for the B. Just like the Capitan for, was for the previous generation, the Capitan was also for the so-called entry-level luxury vehicle of Opel for this generation, as it remained being the cheapest model out of the three models. For this generation, the only engine you could choose from for the Capitan was the 2.8 liter, which, pro which provided between 130 and 145 horsepower, had a top speed between 170 and 182 km an hour, and had a 0 to 100 time between 13.9 and 11.2 seconds. It was the first model of the CAT line going out of production in May 1970, after only being produced for 15 months after the introduction of the generation. A little less than 5,000 units of the Captain B were made, making it the most rare B generation of the CAT line. The Admiral lived on for another few years with the new diplomat until July 1960, 1976, just like the Capitan. Just like the Capitan, the, also, the Admiral also shrunk to 4.9 meters in length. It also, just like the Capitan had, didn't have any options anymore to upgrade to a Chevrolet powered engine for the model, which led to the only engine of it being available was the 2.8 liter that was also available in the other models and the previous generation, which had between 130 and 165 horsepower for this generation, giving the car a top speed between 170 and 190 km an hour, and a 0 to 100 time between 13.9 and 10.5 seconds. It received a slight facelift in the 972, but faced with decreasing sales each upcoming year. The oil prices in 1973 also wasn't good for the fact that it wasn't economical, the sales went up a bit in 1975 after the oil crisis went down for a bit, but the Admiral never reached the same amount of sales before the oil crisis in 1973. Opel simply didn't invest in the Admiral where it needed improvements because of the other potential models that were relevant, such as the new upcoming Ascona. Eventually, the production of the Admiral stopped in July of 1976. By this time, Opel had sold 36,500 Admiral Bs making it a bit less successful than the Admiral A. The Diplomat lived on with the Admiral after the, end, after the end of the production of the Capitan. This model however still had multiple engines, engines to choose from, as this model had the 2.8 liter and 5.4 liter V8 to choose from. The 4.6 liter wasn't available for this generation. Eventually, for the Diplomat, the production ended in July 1977, one year after the discontinuation of the production of the Admiral. A weird part about this is that the Admirals were so low on selling that for the last year between 1976 and 1977, the Diplomats were at actually Admirals but were also available to choose from with a 5.4 liter engine, which you can see in this picture. The Diplomat B was also offered as a long version from mid 1973 to summer 1977, which had 15 centimeters more wheelbase, making the car around 5 meters and 7 centimeters in length. At the end of the production of the Diplomat, Opel eventually sold over 21,000 units. The downfall of the CAT line mainly took place because of the decreasing demand in the early 70s, strengthened by the oil crisis in 1973. Despite the fuel injection engine being an option for the B models, the fuel consumption could still be considered bad or even extremely bad for the Diplomat 5.4 liter V8. Even though luxury cars could still have a higher fuel consumption than other cars in the segment, the fuel consumption of each of the second cat line generation was too high. 
These factors, combined with Opel's interest in other projects at the time, such as the Escona, led to a, with a battle with competition that would always be lost. Thanks for watching the first part of this two-part series. In the next part, I will be talking about the last real luxury car Opel ever made and the indirect successor of the cat line, the Opel Senator. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more and I will see you in the next video.